G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, so we are getting right up in that kind of $1.8 trillion mark, but we just can't breach that kind of $1.9 trillion mark, let alone that $2 trillion mark. We are really kind of stuck uh, at the moment and we're having a hard time getting past it. But look, the market is going up. It is up 3.5%. Now, I was looking at this only moments ago, and it was $1.873 trillion. So, again, we have lost a little bit. But look, Bitcoin dominance is actually dropping. So are we going to go into that crazy kind of alt season that we saw back in 2017 where Bitcoin dominance got way, way down? Now, that doesn't mean... Bitcoin basically dies, uh, not at all. Bitcoin can still go up uh, quite a lot during that, but just the altcoins really, really start to run as well. We can see ETH dominance still low, but gas, ETH gas prices are quite high. And we'll have a look at a story about that shortly. All right, bit of a mixed bag. You know, there's some green and red in here. Nothing too crazy that we can see in the sort of, you know, top 13 coins at least. But let's have a look. What's really pumped in the last 24 hours? In the top 100. Right, Holo doing well. Dent doing well. Huobi token doing well. OKB token doing well. And then again, some other good sort of, yeah, gains. Again, for me, like I said, 15% 24 hours. Anything over that is good. Anything under it is just, you know, okay and kind of stock standard. So a couple of really good gains. And... Uh, at least, you know, some pretty good gains. But look at the seven days. That's actually looking quite good. So again, altcoins, they really are just, you know, still sort of running. Some have come down. You know, the ones that pumped earlier, they've obviously come back down. And maybe they're going to get ready to do their next leg up. But the ones that weren't pumping before, now they are really starting to pump. All right, what about losses? What's not done so well in 24 hours? Well, Bitmax is down, Harmony, Anchor, Theta, Hedera, Decentraland. Look, we got a few losses here, but nothing too bad. Really, only the Bitmax token one's going to hurt. Harmony one, yeah, that'll hurt a little bit, but look, they're still up 20% in the last seven days anyway. Theta Network, same thing, you know, 5%, that's not too bad, but they're still up nearly 30%. And Anchor, I mean, good Lord, they're still up nearly 140% over the last seven days. So again, a bit of a mixed bag, nothing too crazy. Dogecoin uh, going down, you know, all these people that said that they were going to get it to $1. Uh, I mean, it's got a ways to go. It only have to 20x from here. It's five cents right now, and I'm not saying it can't do it at all. But it's going to be quite a mission to get Dogecoin to a dollar. But you never know. Maybe all the TikTokers and that can do it. Anything's possible. All right, let's move on. Now, Ethereum. This is very, very interesting. So this is the Ethereum versus Bitcoin chart. So again, December 2017, uh, in, uh, the 10th, it got quite low, but then rocketed all the way up to its all-time high, uh, 30th of January 2018. So again, the kind of peak of the altcoin season. And then it's just been making its way down and it's really kind of found a base here. Now this has been both uh, resistance and support, but it's been more support than resistance. So support, support, a uh, bit of support there, support, 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 support. And then it dipped under this, support again, almost support there, close enough, support, resistance, support, support, and here we are again. So this is where we are right now. We are coming back down onto a Satoshi level where Ethereum really has been there a lot. And what we're waiting to see is if this is, again, this is that big accumulation phase against Bitcoin, hasn't been outperforming it. And now are we going to rock it up and see something like this again? <sighs> I tell you, it'd be good. It'd be nice. I'm just not sure Ethereum can do it with their gas fees gas fee issues at the moment that that's my personal belief that's not to say ethereum can't do well i think it can do well i just don't think we'll see something like this without uh 2.0 you know second layer solutions and all the rest of it i don't see ethereum getting anywhere near there look i'd love to be wrong because i have a reasonable position in ethereum but i really do think that's the biggest thing holding ethereum back so Hopefully all this, you know, EPR, EIP, you know, 1559 and layer twos, optimistic roll-ups and all of that 
can come sooner rather than later. But it is interesting that it seems to be finding some support uh, on this Satoshi level. So what is it? 3,131,919 Satoshi level. So not dollars, that's Satoshis. Let's have a look at Ethereum versus the dollar. So we can see it was in a bit of a wedge here, broke out to the upside, came back down, retested uh, some old levels, broke up, broke back down, and then look what it's doing. It looks like it's on its way up and starting to retest uh, some old levels, starting to hopefully use it as support. Again, because we're talking about Ethereum and the issues that it's just having with gas, and that's a scaling issue for it at the moment, I don't think it's going to set any crazy prices anytime soon. Now that I've said it, it's probably going to do that. It'll go to $3,500 in the next four days. But I just think it's really, it's kind of, at a peak for now without any good news about scaling you know optimistic roll-ups layer 2 solutions and all that I just I'm not sure Ethereum can go any higher particularly because when the new money comes in which again you know it's called the dumb money but they're gonna come in they're gonna try it and the fees are gonna be so much they're just gonna want to get out of it straight away they're gonna go no I can't even use this and that's why I think Ethereum is just going to be stuck. I think the institutional money will continue to chew it up because they know that once it comes, it'll be worth uh, a whole lot more. That's my personal belief. And that's why I hold my Ethereum. I could easily sell it all and get into something else. But I think they will eventually scale. And when that happens, then you're going to see the price skyrocket. I'm just not sure when that's going to happen. That's the real kicker at the moment. You know, Optimistics has been pushed back. These layer two solutions, you know, they're still working things out, you know, interoperability and all the rest of it. There's so many things going on. There's just, there's no definitive answer at the moment. So I don't think Ethereum is going to get past this kind of $2,000 range anytime soon. But I am more than happy to be proven wrong. And if I am proven wrong, I'll be ecstatic because it means my <laughs> Ethereum's gone up. All right, Bitcoin, let's have a look. Very, very interesting. So, confirmed breakout, nice. It almost pulled back to under. And again, this this candle here, it's a very sort of new candle still. So this is a second candle, but this is a confirmed breakout. But it still could be a confirmed breakout and then roll over before we see something like this. So we'll just have to wait and see. But what I can do is let's get rid of this because this is obviously made invalid at the moment. It still could play out that way, but we have a confirmed breakout on the daily. Now we're just waiting to see what happens. And again, this was the 50-day moving average. It basically bounced perfectly off it. So all waiting to see what Bitcoin does. And in all fairness, as long as Bitcoin kind of ranges, altcoins are going to do really well. As soon as Bitcoin gets on a reasonable run, Profits from the altcoins are going to bleed out for a while. So it's, you know, that kind of yin and yang. You know, yes, we want Bitcoin to do well, but when Bitcoin's doing really well, our altcoins don't do so well. And yes, we want our alts to do really well, but when our alts are doing really well, Bitcoin's generally not doing as well. So, you know, if you're heavily invested in alts, then you're loving this at the moment. And, you know, if you're heavily invested in Bitcoin, then you're not loving it so much at the moment because it's been really choppy up and down. Again, as high as $62,000 and then as low as $43,000. I would have loved to have got some at $43,000. And I had buy orders ready to go down around the kind of $44,000 range and even $46,000 range and we just didn't get there. This time we only got as low as, there you go, about $50,000. So lower highs have been happening, but higher lows have been happening. So again, this feels like it's kind of coiling up getting ready for something and hopefully it's to the upside. Right, moving on, I'm gonna try and make this video a little bit quicker. Mine have been going for about half an hour of late. All right, Dogecoin. You can actually book flights with Dogecoin now. So Air Baltic customers wanting to buy flight tickets can now do so using Dogecoin, Ethereum and Bitcoin Cash. So there we go, the mainstream adoption, it is happening. It's just slowly, slowly and again, that whole trickle, trickle flood. And the gates are starting to open. I mean, you wouldn't have heard of stuff like this only a few years ago. And really, you know, only maybe a year ago, you could hardly hear of anything like that. And now it seems like they're all getting on board. And I would say most of the places that start to accept cryptocurrencies, they plan on holding them for now, long term. 
And interesting, they went with Bitcoin Cash. I mean, it's not dead, but gee, not a lot is going on with Bitcoin Cash. It's been struggling. All right. So there is a ton of stable coins on the exchanges at the moment. As you can see here, it's at an all time high. Generally, when a lot of oh, sorry, a lot of stable coins go onto exchanges, it's because they're getting ready to buy. I'm guessing they can probably feel alt season coming, or maybe Bitcoin's going to go on a run, one or the other, or both, because they can both kind of go on a run at the same time. Generally, it's one or the other outdoing, though. They don't kind of run too much in tandem. But if all these stable coins are going onto exchanges, it probably says something big is about to happen. Now, what we need to be careful of is that there could be a big dump. That's what it could be. And then they're all waiting to buy the dip. But again, we don't know that. It could be the complete opposite, that everything is just about, you know, it's at that boiling point where the bubbles just, where the water's just starting to bubble and then that kettle just goes and everything fires up. I can't tell you exactly what's going to happen, but I do think it'll be to the upside. But look, I've been wrong before and I never offer financial advice, so don't run out and bet the house on anything that I say or anything that anyone else says. As I've said this a number of times, you've got to take a, a you know, information from a whole stack of different uh, places. You know, and you know, people say don't take any advice from YouTube. That's not true. There's plenty of great advice on YouTube. You just got to make sure that you're not getting sucked in by the really bad advice on YouTube because there's plenty of that as well. Twitter, you know, places like this, Crypto Potato. Uh, you know, there's a ton of different sites there, and I'll look at them. But all these stable coins going to exchanges makes me think things are getting ready to take off, and I hope that's the case. All right, a Spanish government is selling its Bitcoin. All right, I don't know if it's the time to do it, but maybe they they know more than I do and they're smarter. So Bitcoin is not liked by everyone from the island council of Tenerife, Spain. At least that's what was suggested by its president, Pedro Martin, who ordered the sale of the local government's investment in cryptocurrencies. I mean, look, maybe he's selling because he feels it's about to top out and he is then going to buy, uh, wait to buy in at cheaper prices later. And look, maybe know something that we don't know, but I'm not sure it's because people don't like it. I think that's, yeah, that's debatable. All right, although the president did not disclose the exact number of bitcoins acquired by the council, it was reported that the liquidation could yield almost 1 million euros, which could be around 20 bitcoins. So there we go. And, you know, what price did they, excuse me, buy those Bitcoin out originally. I mean, if they bought them for like three, four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, selling at $50,000, you know, they've basically 10x their money. You can't blame them for that. But whether they're selling all of their Bitcoin, well, I guess time will tell. But yeah, very interesting that they, you know, just the way this is worded, it, it, it sounds a little bit sensationalized. And maybe he didn't say it exactly like that. Because I couldn't imagine there's too many people out there right now going, you know, again, I've got this Bitcoin. Now's the time I've just got to dump it and sell all of it. There's always going to be some people out there that might think that. But gee, that'd be, that'd be the few because it really does feel like more people are buying than selling at the moment. All right, payment firms. Uh, payment firm Nuvi launches support for 40 cryptos, including Redcoin and Doge. So again, more Doge news. The adoption is coming. Now, I'm not a massive fan of Doge. I don't hate it, and I'd definitely trade it. But, yeah, interesting that they have gone with a whole stack of coins. And, you know, coins like Steam, you hardly hear anything about that. Bitcoin Gold, not really a lot. Sire coin, a little. You know, depending on who you're talking to, they might call these all shit coins. And look, XRP's in there. And again, I'm not saying XRP's a shit coin. Please don't <laughs> take it that way. But it's just got so many issues going on at the moment. It's not exactly one of the better performers. It's not the worst performer, but it's far from the best. And it does seem like this payment firm is now happy to, you know, take on any of these cryptocurrencies. I'm not so sure... Uh, I would want to do that if I was running a payments firm. You know, I'd stick to the bigger ones, but again, some of these smaller ones, Bitcoin, gold, not so sure, Steam, uh, haven't heard much of that in quite some time. Redcoin, I mean, is that even still alive? You know, please, if there's any Redcoin holders out there, don't uh, kill and hate me. There probably could be a lot of stuff going on, but I just haven't heard much. The hype, anyway, is what I'm going to say. It's just not there. All right, 
expect more crypto startups to get bought up by big tech because that's what they've been doing. This is from Porus Water Cooper. So institutional investors will continue to get involved in crypto. The big four firms said in a new report, and they may be going on a startup shopping spree. That is what they do. They get up, they get in and buy the startups, uh, and then it's just basically theirs, and they make a, a fortune. That's what big business does. If you come up with a good idea or something, or start a business, and it's going to do real well, and they're worried that they're going to lose, you know, to you and market share. They're just going to come and buy you out. They've got, you know, billions, trillions of dollars that they can spend. And so they'll throw a couple of hundred million at you. And unless you're sort of absolute that not, you're going to take the world with your company or whatever, you'll sell. And then it'll just be theirs. And then, you know, your idea and your new big thing will be their new big thing. All right. Old coins from back in the day still getting targeted by the SEC. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm not against this. The Securities and Exchange Commission, or the SEC, has charged crypto firm Library, or LBRY, with selling unregistered securities. So Library, a decentralized publishing platform that claims 10 million users, facilitated its operations via Library credits, which are blockchain-based tokens. According to the SEC, however, before developing the network, it also sold the tokens as investment contracts with the assumption that their value would go up. All told, alleges uh, the SEC in a complaint filed today in a US district court, Library received more than $11 million, uh, 11 million in US dollars Bitcoin and services from purchasers who participated in its offering. So they're gonna have to likely pay back that money. It's been a tough time for cryptos, particularly the ones that come back out, uh, you know, came out the big ICO uh, craze back in 2017. You know, the long arm of the law has caught up with them, and that's the way it is. I mean, you know, if they've deemed that this was the security, then I'm happy for the fine to be issued and all the rest of it. But hopefully, they're not just randomly targeting, or not even randomly. I don't care if they're randomly targeted, but if they're not just trying to. You know, I don't get the feeling like they are trying to crush the market. I think they are trying to regulate it in a good way. But, you know, we don't want too much uh, regulation, not over-regulation. That just hurts everybody. Right. Banks take a beating after Bitcoin. Uh, sorry, take a beating as Bitcoin surges after the uh, Arche Archegos, I don't even know how to say that, sell off. So it was a bruising day on Wall Street for big banks exposed to the the, the Archegos sell-off on Friday, but Bitcoin and crypto have been beneficiaries to the turbulence. So you're probably wondering what this sell-off is. Right, so we go over here. This is what's happened. So we've seen this movie before. A hedge fund uses massive derivatives positions to take extremely leveraged bets and blows up, spreading billions of dollars of losses amongst Wall Street banks, banks and, th and, la, 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 and threatening the financial system. In this latest instance, thankfully, it doesn't appear the financial system as at risk is at risk. But the extraordinary fire sale of uh, Archegos Capital's positions has roiled markets and racked up billions of dollars of losses for some of the world's largest and supposedly sophisticated banks. So, another sort of financial, you know. Yeah, I guess we could say it's like kind of an empire or institution uh, has folded uh, and, you know, basically got over leveraged themselves and now gone into insolvency. And the problem is all these big institutions, they put money into each other. So if one fails, it really hurts them. So they're all kind of leveraged the same. And then what companies like this can do is then that they will borrow money against these other uh, Wall Street firms and things like that. And so it's a whole you know, monopoly of cards, basically, that if one falls down, it has you know, big effects right across the board. But as they said here, it doesn't seem like the financial system uh, is at risk at the moment. But lots of hedge funds and banks and things like that have, you know, they've taken a big hit. And basically when they take a hit, then we take a hit. So we go back over to here and we see crypto markets gain strongly with global market cap approaching two trillion. We're not quite there yet. Ethereum was buoyed, excuse me, by News Visa is now experimenting with USDC as a settlement option. Oh God, excuse me. While Wall Street continues to be rocked by the sell-off. And look, it has somewhat affected us though, like because we haven't exactly skyrocketed to you know new all-time highs, and 
a lot of these places are already in Bitcoin, you know, off to the side uh, in other smaller companies, so not so much them. And when they get losses, the first thing they do is sell off the most liquid thing, and that's uh, cryptocurrencies. And we've had, you know, some kind of downside. Now, whether that has anything to do with this or not, I don't know. And whether uh, this will lead towards us having a further sell-off, I guess that's what we're going to have to sort of wait and see, because this news only just came out today. Right, last but not least, Cosmos. So the long-awaited vision of the Cosmos blockchain has now been realised as the holders of the Atom token have voted through inter-blockchain communications, or IBC, enabling assets to transfer easily between blockchains. So interoperability, that is going to be you know the next big thing. The final vote to enable the feature, and how funny is this, was 112 million to 75. Now, I don't know if that's 75 million. I, I doubt it would be. It sounds like 75 people, though, <laughs> voted against it. Well, yeah, it's got me stumped why it would do that. So an overwhelmingly in support of activation. Maybe that's what it is. They just voted against it because they didn't want to activate it just yet. They wanted more time to uh, test it and all the rest of it. That would make a little bit of sense. So in the simplest terms, IBC enables messages to travel between blockchains that have implemented the standard. The most obvious uh, use case in crypto is sending messages to transfer tokens off one chain and onto the other. So it's interoperability that is holding you know, a lot of stuff back at the moment because there's so many different chains. If it was just one, then you wouldn't need to worry about interoperability, but it's never going to be like that. So the first you know chain that can really get that on interoperability going uh, and with ease they're probably going to do really well and it sounds like Adam is doing all right in the space at the moment and look their price hasn't been too crazy again I got in uh, sold half because it wasn't performing that well it still sold it for a profit so that was all right and the other half that I've been holding is just doing okay maybe this is the thing that's going to spark the price all right well that's it from me stay safe be kind to one another Hopefully you're on that game train. Things are looking on the up at the moment, and I'll see you next time.